him Lamnesis is behind bars, accused of doing something very much against his religion, hiring a hitman to kill his estranged wife. Tim Lambesis is the lead singer of the hardcore metal band As I Lay Dying, who consistently presented himself as a devout Christian, frequently incorporating teachings of Jesus into his lyrics and even having tattoos of Jesus on the cross on his body. On the surface, Lambesis appeared to be a kind religious man and a loving father to his three Ethiopian adopted children. But due to his drug addiction, something sinister was growing, from being voted most like Jesus in high school to being sent to a prison for attempted murder of his wife. This is the story of Tim Lambesis. As I Like Dying is a Christian metalcore band from San Diego. They formed in 2000 with Lambesis as a singer and drummer Jordan Mancino. Playing as a duet, they ended up getting a record contract with Pluto Records and recorded their first EP, Beneath the Encasing of Ashes. They started to play shows and even got a tour lined up, so at that point, they knew they needed more members. They expanded to a five-piece, their contract with Pluto Records expired, and they were picked up by Metal Blade Records, which sent them into the studio for their second album, Frail Words Collapse. The album went on to peak at number 30 on the Billboard's independent album charts. Each of their subsequent albums got more and more popular, with their third album, Shadows Are Security, peaking at 35th place on the top Billboard's 200. They would continue to have lineup changes through these times for various reasons. Then their fourth album, Oceans Between Us, topped the rock charts at number one and hit number eight on the top Billboard's 200 charts. They even had a Grammy nomination for their song, Nothing Left, off that album. During their early years, they promoted themselves as Christians and a Christian band. I'm not sure what the difference is between five Christians playing in a band and a Christian band. If you truly believe something, then it should affect every area of your life. All five of us are Christians. But unlike most Christian bands, their lyrics weren't just about God and Jesus. They were much more broad than that, talking about life, struggles, mistakes, relationships, and other issues that don't fit entirely in the spiritual category. In an August 2010 radio interview on the Christian metal radio show, The Full Armor of God broadcast, Lambisa stated, I can only really write about what I'm passionate about in life. So naturally my faith, my belief in the teachings of Jesus and his resurrection come across in my lyrics. Now there's nothing wrong with being in a Christian band and trying to appeal to the mainstream to gain success. The issue is they fake their Christianity to sell records. At one point they were all religious, but as time went on, they slowly became atheist. Even though they were no longer Christian, they decided to keep on pretending to be Christian just to sell more records to the Christian market, justifying it by saying other Christian bands aren't really Christian either. We toured with more Christian bands who weren't actually Christians. In the 12 years of touring with As I Lay Dying, I would say maybe one in 10 Christian bands we toured with were actually Christian bands. Around this time, Lambesis got heavily into working out, and with that came taking steroids to achieve his ideal physique. His wife, Megan Murphy, became frustrated with how he would spend endless hours at the gym and how he wouldn't care for their three kids. During this time, Lambesis also questioned his faith. Then in August of 2012, while on tour, Lambesis sent an email to his wife that would destroy everything they had built. In the email, he stated he no longer loved her, he had engaged in an affair, and no longer believed in God. They immediately separated and she filed for divorce the very next month. According to the divorce filings, Megan claimed that Lambesis was obsessed with bodybuilding and spent thousands of dollars on tattoos. She further alleged that he displayed neglect towards their children, leading to situations where their well-being was jeopardized. In one instance, he fell asleep while his little kids were playing in a pool. Megan got full custody of their children and got a large chunk of his money as well. This sent Lambesis into a rage. He would complain about it at the gym with his friends and eventually said it would be better off if she was dead. On April 23rd, he started asking around at the gym and eventually asked his trainer if he could find someone to kill his wife. He eventually got in contact with a hitman named Red, who was actually just an undercover agent. On May 7th, Lambesis met up with the hitman where he told them that he wanted his wife gone and to never see her again. The agent asked, do you want her dead? Lambesis replied, yes, that's exactly what I want. Later, the agent said that when he told Lambesis that it was gonna cost $20,000, that he didn't even flinch, that he was very willing to pay it. Lambesis gave the undercover agent $1,000 for expenses, pictures of Megan, a code to get into their house, and to create an alibi, dates he would be looking after their children. He said once the job was done, he would pay him $20,000. But unknown to Lambesis, the entire conversation was being recorded. Later that same day, while at a grocery store, he was arrested and charged with soliciting an undercover detective to kill his wife. He pled not guilty and tried to claim that his thought process was affected because of his steroid use. The judge thought he would skip town, so he set his bail at $3 million, but then a few weeks later changed it down to $2 million where Lambesis was able to post bail. He was under house arrest and had a GPS tracker around his ankle. He was facing nine years, but then changed his plea to guilty and took a plea deal. How do you plead? Guilty. After being on house arrest for about a year, he was sentenced to six years in prison on May 16th in 2014. While in prison, he re-examined why he left his Christian faith and became a Christian once again, or at least that's what he says. 
After a few years in prison, he tried to sue the Southern California Detention Center for $35 million. He claims they denied his request for anastrozole, which is a drug to help fight the side effects of withdrawals from steroids. Since the prison denied him, he developed breasts and went through severe emotional distress. In September of 2016, they dismissed his lawsuit. Then after just serving only two and a half years, he was released on December 17th of 2016. So you might be wondering, well, what happened to him after he was released from prison? After he got out, he posted a very lengthy apology in the band's Facebook page. While some people seem to brush off his actions and forgive him, many of his fans were extremely disgusted with him. So if someone tries to murder their wife and still has a career afterwards, I wonder where the line is drawn for what's acceptable. Chris Brown beats a woman, R. Kelly urinates on little girls, and they both have careers. I guess I shouldn't be surprised by any of this. At first, most of the members had issues with Lambesis. They didn't want to get back together, but once out of prison, they all talked with Lambesis and decided he had changed and was back to his old self. They got back together and released a new single, My Own Grave. On June 16th of 2018, they had their first show in years at SOMA, and it sold out within four minutes. But this comeback had many people very upset. Even the media outlets chose not to publish any more articles about As I Lay Dying. In 2019, they released their most recent record, Shaped by Fire, before going on tour for their album. Lambesis accidentally poured gasoline on himself while at a bonfire and burned 25% of his body. He recovered and continued his tour. I was going to light a fire, something I've done you know, hundreds of times, just put a little bit of accelerant to get it going, and the cap from the accelerant was broken, so instead of it just squirting a tiny bit in the fire, it just fell out, dumped everywhere, because the cap just, just fell off or broke off, okay. and uh, dumped all of my clothes, all my clothes was, were soaked, and, uh, and then, and then the, the can itself exploded in my, you know, I, I had a bunch of hair that singed in my beard, and luckily my face was fine, but then the whole left side of my body was, was soaked, and okay. I ended up in the ICU for uh, a few weeks. Being burned itself is, you know, it's, of course it doesn't feel good, but it's like this momentary traumatic thing, and then, and then the pain sort of like, goes to this burning sensation, you know, like the, the leftover wound, but then uh, every, every day they have to change your bandage and then scrub that wound like really, you know, really harshly with like a, uh, I've heard in the military sometimes they'll even use like a steel wool type stuff, depending on what kind of shrapnel's in there. In my case, they were just using like really harsh wash, washcloths, but it's, it's of course because it's what's best for me, but it's, it's way more painful than the initial injury, so. While on tour, each of the original members started seeing that Lambesis hadn't changed. And one by one, they slowly started to quit the band with each being replaced by a new member. Many years ago, I actually hung out with Tim Lambesis. We were both living in Carlsbad, California. This was probably like 2005, 2006. And I knew a friend who invited me to one of their house parties. And I just remember one of my friends I was coming with, he was like super stoked. He was super excited to see this band because I guess he listened to the band. I honestly had no idea who they were. I just knew they were some hardcore band. And back then in Southern California, literally every single person that was in a band was in a hardcore band other than me. So they were kind of like a dime a dozen. I remember though, as soon as we walk into their house, Tim Lambesis looks over at us and goes, who the fuck let in all these Abercrombie people? And during that time, me and my friends, we worked at like Hollister and Abercrombie, so that's pretty much all we ever wore. But you know, we hung out with them. I remember going in the garage and talking to the bass player. I played bass at the same time and we bonded over music. Um, They're pretty cool. It was a fun party. I just remember there's a lot of Jack Daniels bottles everywhere and cocaine. Now there's no doubt that Tim Lambesis and As I Lay Dying left a permanent mark on the metal scene. Their controversial resurgence after their troubled past begs the question though, can redemption and music coexist harmoniously or will the echoes of their past forever overshadow their future?